Welcome back to the Mummy's Mask. The homebrew, not the AP. Paisa, please don't sue us. There was actually one, one, one gentleman in YouTube who was commenting. It's like, oh, I'm so glad I found this stream. I'm going to be running this AP like next month. I'm hoping to pick up some tips. It's and like, I'm, uh, I'm um, unfortunately. Oh, um, yeah, about that. <laughs> Maybe later, but not now. Alrighty, so where you guys last left off, you had a mimic potion nomming on a uh, certain friend of ours. <laughs> yeah, my other one's probably about to start banging his fists together to start breaking it. He is not amused. Also in this process, um, well, basically everyone who's outside the door, I will need a perception check real quick. Alrighty, well, uh, Tabat and Callium will hear very, very familiar zombie moans coming from the north. And this is where we'll probably start the combat, if you guys are ready. Alrighty. Suit. This mummy is going to come from a part of the hallway um, north that you saw an opening, and we'll try to slam Deanna. Ooh, didn't even ask her out first. Nope, apparently this is just wanting to, you know, get straight to the point. <laughs> I will also need... Um... Will saves. Well, okay, so Pudabas, you are now having the effect of the despair. Okay. I need to roll 1d4 for how many turns, but one second. Yay. All right, so in order, the first one's for Pudabost, the, uh, the second one is for Lel. So you both only have it for one turn. Fleetstone has fear for four turns, and Callium has it for two. Is there a radius to that banner effect for the plus versus fear? Uh, as long as you can see me. Let's be at 16.
is the DC of the fear effect? It was 16. That's it, you beat it. Oh, then I'm actually okay then. Oh, that's right, you guys got a buff from uh, Callium, right? Yeah. Yep, because he's got a flag. It's pretty cool. Captain proudly waving his flag, inspiring our courage. All right. Ignore the D4 rolls, then, if you passed. <laughs> Roger that. So that mummy ends their turn there. I don't think it hit Deanna. Nope. So this other mummy is going to come in, slam into Pudabast. Oh no. And we will need one more. Nice. Yay! Yay! <laughs> it missed. <laughs> and I'm not spooked. No, as long as you guys get above a 16 uh, for this next save, you guys won't have to do any more will saves for this round. Picturing Pudabas like... <sighs> Sneezing or coughing from the dust and sand kicked up just as a punch hits the wall over his head. Actually, yeah, that probably is what happened. He's like, oh, it's dust, there's a library in here. And then I'll just need Callium and Weed. What's the bonus again for the flag? It's plus two at all times. Okay, fleet stones. But he's only in fear for one turn. Nice. All right, the mummies came out and sprung on top. It's now Lel's turn. Let's uh, let's go back and fire off a snowball. This guy. Is touch. Uh, for which one? This fella hitting Kudabast. All right, if it matches, it hits, right? And that's yeah. for, like, touch AC, though. Yeah, it's a little easier since it's touch. But yes, in most cases, if it meets, it succeeds. Gotcha. And yeah, touch it, that definitely hits. Or anything else, well, <laughs> that'll do for now. Tabat, you just witnessed a snowball fight. What's he gonna do? <laughs> Tabat will grab his holy symbol to Anubis and summon the its favorite weapon, the falchion, as a spiritual weapon. He casts a spell.
And this uh, magical falchion goes thwacking the mummy over Pudabest. I am only sad that it can't get flanking. Hmm. Um, what does it do? Because I'm not... Okay, I see it now. Now, is that to AC? Regu regular <laughs> AC. It's just like a weapon attack. Probably gonna miss. Yeah, it misses. The mummy yep. kind of plays dodge. It's like, whoop! <laughs> That's alright. Uh, and he will five foot step to become a more attractive target than uh, our scribe. As far as the mummy golem, um, I don't remember. Was he under our direct control, or was he just kind of on his own? Uh, he's under direct control of you guys. Okay. So specifically, uh, you because you have the control rod. Yep. But you can have him have other people control him as well. Okay. So I don't know what the action economy is to do that. If it's just verbal, then I will command him to charge towards Pudabast. Okay, so charge as in not to attack, correct? <laughs> charge as in get here and swack a mummy. Will do. And it'll only be a single slam attack, if I recall right, from you guys telling me about that. <laughs> yep, single I'm a, slam I'm a, at plus two. I'm going to charge, yep. Yeah. Uh, these macros are a little weird, so let me make sure those are actually doing what they're supposed to be doing. They're not one either way, so it's going to mess, but I just want to make sure the numbers are in so the, the mummy charges in and uh, tries to hit the mummy but between Tabat and Pudabest uh, ducking and dodging and weaving he can't get a clean swing in. Wait. Oh, oh wait, wait. We skipped uh... No, that, that was my bad. That was my bad. Yeah. Um, it is your turn, Diana. So go ahead and take your turn. She was walking through here like it was any other day, but now that Undead showed up, she's now happy. And she's going to turn to this one and attempt to absolutely demolish it. Go. Oh, finally, something to fight. Oh! Oh! What a nice. 69. Nice. You know, I'll be nice. honest. I think you just killed it in one blow from Fury of either being snuck up on or super happy. I can't tell. Okay, <laughs> oh well, my god! That, okay. that is disgusting! I put a step and put the rest on this guy. Who's slamming? Yeah, it, their health is 60 for the record, and he hit for 69. <laughs> nice. If there's one thing a ranger does well, it's kill their favorite target. <laughs> Come on and slam, and welcome to the jam. So, uh, with his offhand or any of those other attacks, did it hit this one? Yeah, it hit for the last 48 damage of that thing's health. <laughs> well, no, 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 all that damage still just goes on the first target, like, damage doesn't bleed over. I thought Deanna said she switched attacks over to the other one after the first strike. Well, yeah, but do the like does the 17, 20, and 19 hit on that one? Um, yeah. For how much damage he had, um, oh, okay. the uh, last two attacks hit because his AC is only 20. No. If his AC and is 20, then only one of those attacks hit. Only the first Kalara yeah, hit. The, the 20. Yeah. Well, I moved him off the screen anyway, so that's fine. Um, so you... Alright, my turn. Uh, seeing that he has been backed into a corner and has a uh, rather nasty looking opponent in his face, uh, for Podubas' turn, he's going to cry out uh, Guardian, to my side! And he will use his, uh, Maker's Call ability. Let's see, uh, it functions... Let's see, it functions as Dimension Door, so thankfully he's moving on my turn. 
So he is moving adjacent to me, right here. With the thing attached to his hand nomming on it? Nope. Dimension door lets you escape grapples. Never knew that. Okay, good to know. Yep. Generally, any any force movement gets you out of a grapple. Meanwhile, Kem will then begin the beating. Uh, no, he won't, because he used Dimension Door and ends its turn. Turn hadn't started. Yep. His turn begins this moment that you begin your own turn. Summons have the same turn as you. So using Dimension Door would end its turn because it is actually indeed casting Dimension Door. It's the Maker's Call weirdness plus and stuff. Basically, it's like you bring it to you, but yeah, you, it turns over. Fantastic. That ability is useless. Good to know for later. Okay, yeah. done. <laughs> I mean, it can be useful, but yeah. So I, especially, I honestly don't see how. To get it out of a grapple? <laughs> yeah. Get it out of a grapple. Get, like, if it gets trapped away from you. I mean, I've seen people use Baker's Call quite frequently. Give it some feats so that it can act after a dimension door. Yeah, that's that's what what people tend to do with Maker's Call. There we go. All right, Sue, did you want to move? Or are you good, Poodlebust? I can't. Aye, aye. Okay, so Drop you're kind of Between a rock and a hard place. Literally. Alright, so then it's Callium's turn with his steed frozen in fear for this turn only. Okay. Well, no, I only have two. And my steed has four, according to what you said. Well, you had the plus two um, that I didn't see before. Yeah, so, but that only brought that only brought his first saves up to a fourteen and oh, a I didn't nat no, I nat one the first one, and the other one is that um he my steed failed on a on a fifteen mm -hmm. uh, with the bonus. So currently my turn is over. Yeah. Oh, but yeah. I only have two okay. rounds because you, you rolled two, so Well, the potion mimic is now back to its original state of a mimic chest. Uh, it is now going to move. Yep. It wants to nom on living flesh, so it's going to try to attack. Uh, it's about. Oh, and confirmed. What Noms is for... that gift from? No, that's Dark Souls. Noms for 18 points of damage, and I believe there's something with the adhesive that he has to roll for. Reflex, I think? It's CMB versus CMD. Yeah, it's okay. reflex when you hit it. Oh, it's so a free grab attempt. It, nothing when it eats me. Gotcha. The chest is gnawing on my leg. Yeah, it's tempting, but completely failed. Yep, it fails to gnaw at you. The other mimic will... 
Mm. I guess the other mimic will go to the golem. That matches, so it takes the damage. Hopefully with a little DR to help, maybe? Uh, let's see, it doesn't have DR. DR slash magic. Are these natural attacks considered magical? Mm, like it's, slam, it's basically slam like what your mummy uses. Then that would your be a no. Yeah. He takes no damage. Nice. Uh, does that beat its CMD though? Uh, CMD 21, CMD 23. Ooh, avoids it. Yep, he the plays golem. dog with it. The construct gives no fucks. It looks like you gave the golem initiative. Um, so do you want me to just take that off since he goes into your turn? Yeah, totally. Alright, in that case, it is Level's turn. Well, let's see, we only have two, where's that, three, three to go. Let's let's give everybody a little extra pep in their step. Hmm. And he's going to back up a little bit. How about them? How many can you affect at this level? Let's see. Well, seven. Okay, so leave out the horse or leave out the construct? Fair enough. Alrighty. Which would you <laughs> like to exclude? Uh, let's leave out the horse. The constructs in the middle of it. Yep. Okie dokie. Anything else? No, he stepped back. The bot. Let's see if he can put down this mummy, this atrocity, to the tenants of Anubis. Blinking. Pop. Against a zombie. Does it still stand? It does. Pop. the 18 connect. I feel like you're 18, missing... 18 does not. Okay. Uh, then he will follow up with the Falchion. Turn off some buffs here because that does not get any of the haste stuff. Oh, there we go. Uh, no confirm, but six more damage. Alrighty. Still up. 
Yeah, it's still up. Okay. Mummy construct. Follow up. Ooh, he's mad. Or 21 damage. Yeah, after that first hit, it's gone. You just see it turn to death. Second attack will be against the Northern Mimic. Hasted attack against the same. So just take the top one on this one. So potential 32 damage if a 20 hits. It sure does. And then I need to do CMB, I think, to see if it sticks to it. That's a reflex save on his part. Adhesive is weird in that when something attacks the Mimic, they need to make a reflex save. But when the Mimic attacks someone else, it needs to do the, uh, the, uh, the, the grapple check. Yeah, that. But I believe it is now stuck to the mummy. Hmm. Yep, its hand is currently in its mouth, and it's just licking around the arm contently. Yum, yum, yum. Hmm, finger sandwiches. That will conclude Bot's turn. Uh, actually, no. He will five foot up to make it a little easy and command his. Uh... Now I already commanded this. The first one. But he'll just move five feet up there to clear a little bit of a path for uh, Galen potentially. Sounds good. Alright, now is Deanna's turn then. Um Uh Calliums Uh no that should be fine. Um I'm just gonna attack I was gonna bull rush, but that's probably not a good idea. All right, so this and this, but then I gotta make a bunch of reflex saves, right? Uh, one for each attack. Um, I assume the fifteen doesn't hit. It is fifteen, yeah. Oh, does hit then? All right, so you're up to four saves, and I think you're good. In your hasted attack, of course. Oh, yeah. I'll uh, just take the first one off of this. That extra 18. Well, before you do that... Um... I think that mimic got splattered. Yeah. Okay, so after your second attack on the first two, it gets splattered against the wall. Alright, Diana will... Five foot step and transfer the rest of the taxi to the other one. Which I think that means that one got splattered too. Yeah, Deanna hits hard, and the Mimics actually have a lot lower, uh, <laughs> a lot lower everything than the mummies that you guys have been going against. Yep, they still can be pretty nasty, as we saw with, you know, Tabak getting, like, half of his, uh, leg bitten off. The mummy golem stands up straight, shaking the goo off of its hand as the mimic disintegrates around it. Alright, and from the mimics, um, there will be what well, you guys have already been previously seeing with the mimics, so like some broken daggers, um, just generalized uh, traveling gear. 
And then you'll see pouches of probably about 20 to 30 gold. Um, there's about four of them. And then from the mummies, you will see that there's two cursed amulets that you do not want to touch, um, as you guys found out. And then uh, there's also what looks to be an ancient Egyptian gold uh, necklace on both of them that you can sell for, I guess, whatever the weight in gold would be of that. Um, so we'll say probably about 300 for both. Okay. I see Deanna moved into the room. <laughs> Surely there can't be more Mitmix. <laughs> I'm not that mean. Well, maybe. We'll see. Uh, but anyway, <laughs> you see on the left side of you, there's three bags completely intact. <laughs> She'll move closer and then start poking at them at first <laughs> before she opens them. <laughs> Yep. <laughs> so nothing happens. Although, you do see a wiggling and wobbling coming out of one of the bags, which happens to be four rats. But they scurry away and run from you. Um, so, I guess depending on which bag you start, I will go from there. Let's go left to right. Oh. Alright, in the left bag, you will find that it was a cleric's bag. So, there will be a wand of cure moderate wounds, half used. Um, there is an amulet of natural protection plus two. And also an amulet of what looks to be particular to the goddess Isis. There is incense, um, basically anything you need to communicate with their god or goddess. Um, and then in the middle bag, you will find... Okay, in the middle bag, you will find a bag of what looks to be someone who is a unarmed fighter, uh, so possibly a monk. Um, there is a monk's weapons. Uh, it's the, the hand weapons with the spikes on it. Um, I can't think off the top of my head. <laughs> Hand wraps? Yes, it's hand wraps. Thank you. I was actually about to go look it up real quick. <laughs> uh, but these hand wraps seem to have an additional piece, like a, a metal piece that goes over the knuckle area. Um, it has like uh, about three spikes on it. Um, nice, nice. And then you will find robes, and then in this bag you'll also find something that um, will make uh, you think of one of the weapons you saw on the wall. 
but you're not fully sure as it seems to be covered in some kind of uh, gunk of some kind. Maybe a mimic got a hold of it, so it's just covered in adhesive, but it's black and kind of greenish color. Um, and then in the last bag, you will actually find that it almost seems kind of empty. But there seems to be a small bag of uh, holding in there, which might hold all of the belongings that you would think would be in the bag. Hmm, this is, this could be useful. Let's find out what they were carrying. Turns the bag inside out. <laughs> you see, well, this would probably be Poodabost's heaven, uh, about 12 or 20 uh, scrolls and maybe even personal journals of like uh, another scholar much similar to Poodabost. Um, you will also see that they are holding uh, a few wands in there. One is a wand of long stride, or long. I hate the name of the stupid wand, but I have it for Petra and uh, Zach. Is it long strider? Long strider, yeah. Um, thank you. Mm -hmm. And then there is also it looks to be some kind of magical parchment. Um, and it is rolled up, and there are some runes as well that drop out of the bag. <coughs> and that is all that's in the bag of holding. Oh, and also probably one bag of probably about a hundred gold or so. As the party is well trained in reading magical scrolls in the histories, what is written upon this this magical scroll? It seems to be um, a scroll of protection against evil. Okay. Lel will check out the runes that fell to the floor. Ah, oh, what is this? The runes are actually made, um, you can tell, of really fine amethyst. And uh, carved into them is seems to be like in the magic embedded symbols um, that you'd find with uh, either you can throw the rune in one of them probably about five of them you would say is probably explosive runes that you can just throw at someone um and then you have three which is like a temporary one hit protection um and then there is three which seem to be made out of ivory almost and they seem to be blank but you can definitely imbue magic into them and make them whichever rune you choose Sounds like it will come in handy. That uh, amulet of protection to could go to uh, whomever didn't get the the last one. either Calum or the Eidolon. I don't remember who got what. Eidolon cannot. Eidolon cannot. He has an uh, Amulet of Mighty Fists right now. Calum, if you need a natural armor necklace. It's yours. Hmm. 
Was anyone injured during that uh, scuffle? Oddly enough, I didn't get hit once. Hmm. As okay. as, uh, as Potty Boss is still like rubbing at his nose. No, I'm I'm good. I'm good. It would seem that. Oh, this nest dusty. It would seem that we are getting used to their tactics. This is good. The sooner we can put down these abominations, the better. Come, we should continue on. All right, and you will notice once you leave the room, you have a north way up and a south way down. But it seems like sand would be near the end of this hallway in the south. Random mechanical question. Anyone got a uh, decent use magic device skill? Not I. Oh, oh wait a minute. Who's, someone's a ranger, aren't they? Yeah, I'm a Diana. ranger. Diana. This wand of Longstrider is yours now. Oh, fancy. You're the, you're the only one who can use it. How many charges was on it? Didn't say. Full charge. Oh, it's good to have a little extra 10 feet of movement. Uh, do we know what caster level it is? Minimum, I assume? Yeah, they're always caster level. Yeah, it's minimum. So, one hour, 10 feet of movement. Easy peasy. All right. And it would be minimal, so, yeah. Whatever he said for this one. Well, there's another door to the south. Do we wish to explore there? Or head north, where this last mummy came from? I see we are a party of strong opinions. <laughs> Let us go north. That's a good choice. I would prefer to go north. It's technically left in this case, and I advocate going left. Once you guys get to that door, you do see that it has some damage, but you also see it is magically locked. So, um, it seems like uh, this has no handles, and there is something about this door that you could probably sense is not normal. I mean, I could probably try to pick it, but uh, anyone have any other tricks? If you are able to open it without expending resources, I think that this is based. Do not know <sighs> what we will need later on. All right, she'll try opening it using a point of skill sage to roll twice and take the higher. 27. Well, uh, it seems like it doesn't seem to open. Though you know you have probably heard a click as if it should. She'll try to open it just in case it was a silent click that she didn't hear. Nope, it doesn't seem to budge. Hmm, I feel like that should have worked. Maybe there's another mechanism further in. Um, All right, anyone have any more tricks before I go on to plan B? She motions to her uh, Earthbreaker. Let's maybe find a... 
the actual mechanism because there might be some other, you know, traps and all that that are designed to uh, go off if you try and uh, use the brute force method. Mm, indeed. Well, we have confidence in you, Diana. Try again. I am certain you will succeed. Tabat. for Anubis's guidance. All right, we'll try one more time. Tabat, as you say that, I need you to make a perception roll. Pause, champ. You can tell from looking at it as you're about to help Diana try to open it again that this door is magically sealed with a spell of a name. Spell of a what? You need to know the name in which to open the door. Ah. Ah. Ah, Diana, it was not your fault after all. Look here. It would seem that this is magically sealed. Hmm. I believe you must speak a name, a particular name, in order to, to pass. He looks back towards Lelis and Pudabast. Perhaps our scholars would have some insight on this. Oh, so who has the scroll um, that your uh, mask maker gave you on the rape? I think you entrusted that to Tabat. Yeah, I'm guessing that with that prompting that there is a name written on there somewhere. Well, if you remember right, he told you that the name has been long gone off the scroll. Ah. But you guys need to find the name on the wall. But he did put protections in to make sure the wraith wouldn't help Neath. Hmm. Maybe this is the the place where you say the wraith's name and it well, you know, let him out. Ah, huh. that is most likely the case. And we must continue searching. Mm -hmm. uh, onward this way. Conveniently continuing to the west. Dungeon Master, can you get rid of the darkness over here? It's, it's very spooky. <laughs> well, it just lagged a little bit there. Okay, so darkness is gone. Hello, darkness, my old friend. And it seems you... It seems you've hit a dead end of the maze. We have seen rooms like this before. Check the walls. Perhaps there is a trigger or something hidden. Actively running his hands along the walls in case there's illusory surfaces involved. You will find that nothing seems out of sense. It's probably literally, if you could read ancient Egyptian, it would say dead end. <laughs> All right, south it is. We have exhausted all the ways to go left over here. We must now find a new left. <laughs> Our new left is three lefts, which happens to be right. Holy crap, Tobias. You're just running, aren't you? Yeah, just same time. That's where we're going. Oh, I see. There's a little... 
or not? It's okay, this looks like a dead end too. Just to be thorough, she'll make one perception check in this room before leaving. Anything of note in here, Dungeon Master? You can see that this is actually the open part where the hand came through for the axe. Um, and you can see that below the axe, there looks to be hanging um, basically a vegetation at one point. Like, it seemed like there was actually a spring here of some kind. Um, but outside of that, there's nothing of real value here. I did notice in the notes that uh, you didn't put down the potential magical weapon uh, that was covered in gunk. Okay, so you're using guidance to help her open. Yep. 26 perception, 29 for trips. So, for this door, um, you do um, see that there is a trap. Um, it's attached to when you go to close the door once it's open. Uh, there may be a mechanism if you try to uh, lock pick the door, um, but otherwise, if you open it, there's a chance you guys will be closed into this room with no way out. Ooh, that sounds like fun. No way out for those not possessing a dwarven lockpick. Yep. Diana will attempt to disarm this, just using a norm normal check. Hey, look at that. Well, there you go. You disarm it, and you hear what he what hears to be like a, a cutting of a string of some kind. Um, but yeah, the door is now safe to open. She will open it. As the door opens, Deanna can see that this room is basically filled with sand, and it has also an open area above it. Uh, but in here, you can see what looks to be um, remains of an old spring of some kind. Um, and it all seems to be buried under the sand. She will look around in the room, see if there's anything else worth noting. You can note that there is a mummified remains of what looks to be a priest of some kind, or priestess. Just to be sure, she'll walk over and crush the skull of it. Where the there, circle is where the body is. <laughs> there have been too many animated mummies so far. Well, you find as you try to go crush the skull, um, that something magical um, pushes back at you as if protecting the remains. So 
I'll just say back. Lelis, Potabost, um, why can't I crush this thing? Excellent question. Hmm, most curious. I would not put uh, simple bone as being beyond your abilities. Perhaps Let's there get is a closer something special look at about it. About will lean down and examine the bodily remains uh, from both a physician's aspect as well as magical. Well, this will do the same. Nicks or scores across the bones, suggesting a weapon damaged the, the body okay. beforehand and all that fun jazz. Alright, so you will see uh, on this body, it's almost a little too well preserved, like as Diana feared it could turn into a mummy. But in this case, uh, it actually looks to be a priest or priestess of Neith. A long time ago, long since kind of maybe trapped down here. And she has an amulet on, but it's not cursed. So it's actually a safe amulet, but it seems to have a a sacred bonus to it that keeps her remains from being crushed. On her robes, you can see that she had a a knife wound of some kind uh, to the chest area, as well as what looks to be a a potentially broken wrist or an also leg from a fall. Usually such priests and priestesses would carry a holy book or journal or some sort. Do they have any misuse? Perhaps the name that we seek. Also, taking a closer look at the amulet to see if that is anything that would be utilitarian to us at the, at the our present situation. It is an amulet of preservation, so you did type that right. (laughs) As for possibly a book or journal of some kind, um, you guys can look around in the sand. Uh, You can see it's pretty high up, so it could hide a few books and even weapons and maybe even another like a bag of holding of some kind. Hmm. Uh, Caleb, your spear, or lance, I'm not certain what you call such a, such an implement. It, it is, simply put, it is long and pointy. Perhaps you could uh, jab it in the, in the sand and see if there's anything that you might discover. Simpler than trying to unearth this entire room. Uh, okay. Go jabbing about in the sand. Alright, so poking around in the sand, you'll hit the floor, which underneath seems to be marble. Um, But as you get kind of further from the priestess's body, Mm. You do hear uh, not a clink of marble, but yeah, uh, kind of like a soft thud. And then, if you poke near that one more time, you will actually hear something that sounds like a almost a ripping of a bag, nearly. It sounds like you have found something there. Indeed. 
And she'll uh, just use his, um, he'll pull his shield off his arm and just use it a, basically as a, a big scoop and start digging into the sand, making a small pile in the far corner. All right, after you dig for about, say, about a minute or two, uh, you'll unearth what looks to be pretty much like a rotted cloth about to be tattered and torn bag um, from ancient times. Remarkably cons preserved, considering. <laughs> and then Easy. next to it, Good. you will also dig up what looks to be a tome of some kind um, made of you're almost scared to say human bone um, and leather. No, I wish, but no. <laughs> oh, the best. Come see. Y yes. What do you make of this? Looks like something that might interest you, particularly. Considering how uh, old it must be. All right, let's let's get to reading here. Uh, any checks I can do to determine the nature and uh, maybe subjects of this book? Yes. Give me knowledge, religion, and arcana. Alrighty. But we'll read over her shoulder and offer a few pointers. Also, um, if you look at the bag... You'll see that um, between the tatteredness and the tornness of the fabric, that there is um, what looks to be a weapon very similar to Neath's original weapon, which was a bow and arrow. Interesting. All right, I think Tabat's going to have me on the religion. Hmm. Bow and arrow in the body of a priestess or priest of Nish. Would not be surprised if this is their favorite weapon and what they trained in its clergy. Would do much the same with Anubis. He, our lord and god prefers the flail. Why I carry mine. Mm, this could have been one that uh, was here before she turned. It's hard to say. All right, so from your knowledge rolls, you can see that this book is made up of uh, fallen warrior's bones. So this is an original tome of Neath before she turned evil. And uh, it so happens to be the bones of Neath's human lover, um, which you would have known from reading the book that you found, or scroll all about Neath that you found in one of the tombs, um, that she had a lover by the name of uh, Jabal. <laughs> well, seems that he uh, gave both life and body to her. There's probably something poetic here about that. Inside this tome, uh, you can see what looks to be uh, rituals in which to protect the warrior's tombs. So, like uh, the Book of the Dead, uh, modern day time for us, for their rituals that they use to put their dead to peace and send them to Anubis. Okay. Somewhere near the back, however... Uh, you see that there are some personal, like some newer pages that were put in probably, we'll say about a century after this was actually originally made. 
Um, and you will see that back there, there is a way to remove um, spells on any locked doors that are magically sealed. Uh, as long as you have a weapon or something of Neath to open it. Or, if that doesn't work, there is what looks to be a, a half-written name of some type of creature. You, you're not really sure of which creature, but you can tell that it's half-written, and it... My pusha talk's weird. Uh, let me type the half-written name. The other half seems to be like it started to get written. Um, but as you can see from the priestess's state, she may not have gotten the chance to finish writing the said name. Okay. <laughs> uh, Dungeon Master, I forgot to note here, uh, the Warhammer turned Deceptor that I have, who's that of again? Is that of Neath? Because I know I found like a lot of her stuff hidden in it. Yes. Uh, so... Neath, when she turned evil, uh, started using a warhammer. Well, I think we should be good to get that door open back there. At least with, uh, with something I got here. Alright. We can make progress. Though, I think there was still one other locked door on our way here if we want to go investigate that first. And with this bow... Perhaps that will qualify as well. Well, either that or the Warhammer that I got earlier. One of the two. Be thorough. <laughs> okay, that was weird. Uh, you cut off midway, and then somehow my Discord messed up. So, oh, sorry. I heard something about weapon. <laughs> long, long story short, uh, he has his scepter slash mace, and we picked up the bow. Between those two, we expect that one or the other will be able to open the door. In the meantime, we are heading to the southeast to completely explore and be thorough. I believe Deanna or Adam is... Oh, he is back. Never mind. Yeah, um, so... <laughs> Deanna, I did not see, but Deanna actually went through another door. Um, and it actually leads down uh, to the same room down below. Oh, okay. Nice, there were two ways in. You'll actually see that this uh, one actually has a door that's already opened. Like it had been barged into. Uh, but one door is open and broken off the hinges. They're not the first to be here. Oh, I was being... Dana looks inside. Alright, so, as you enter this room, 
Um, you can actually see, I'll be drawing this out, um, but I'll just explain it first. There seems to be a, a magic removal of fluid of some kind uh, in the corner. Uh, and then next to it, there's a table with some notes on it and some scattered uh, research. So you can probably see that someone has definitely been here and they were doing research on the ruins itself. Um, and the magic removal, um, I guess you can say it's a magic removal potion of some kind. It's in a, like a kennel. It's basically in something you can dunk, uh, a weapon into. Um, but it seems to be intact and almost brand new. Like someone just made it in the last week. What use would someone have for such a thing? Uh, purifying one's weapon, maybe? Did not remove all the magic. Seems wasteful. Mm -hmm. I tend not to question the ways they hold, because... I think they might have known better, or they might have had, you know, different problems than we do. Hmm. But if you look here, there's no dust. This was made recently. Or the room was really well preserved. On the uh, right wall, uh, right side of Deanna, uh, you'll see that there's another something else written on the wall. But it also seems newer as well, within the last week to week and a half. Sorry, I had someone talking to me. What's on the wall? I'll be typing it up for you. Um, but it seems to be something else on the wall. And it is an ancient Egyptian. Um, so and I think most of you guys can actually read this. Uh, but it does seem like it's a newer handwriting. Um, it is ink that is on the wall, uh, from looks to be like a ink well of some kind. Diana will read it. It is Goblum. <laughs> Goblum. Maybe this is the name we're looking for. Could be. And there are no there are notes on the table to her left. Right next to the little kettle of Magic removal. Alright. Well, might as well investigate them notes. Sure. I'm going to go investigate those notes. See what they say. Alrighty. So... As you go over to look at them, you actually can start recognizing the handwriting as Kelia's father's handwriting. And he wrote on one of the notes that he found a gunk up, gunked up weapon and he couldn't remove it by prestidigitation press spell. Uh, so he made this magic removal to remove it because it could be a key to uh, the mask search. Uh, but the gunk was too caked on and seems like it was magically stuck to the weapon. Same. 
Oh, well, uh, at least we found the notes of her late father. Uh, I'll collect those up to return to her later. This mention of gunked up weapon. We have seen this before, have we not? Yeah, uh, yeah, these, uh, these were the notes of Kelia's father. That's why I'm collecting them up to uh, return them. So saying, like we found one of these gunked up weapons. Hmm. Oh, well, I suppose we can get in there and see what happens. Dude, I must admit I am quite curious myself. What do you think, Ledis? You are the arcanist of the group. Is there any danger here? Well, I can't speak for Lelis. Seems like it might not be a bad idea. Go ahead and clear the room and don't go up. And... Okay, so you're going to dunk the weapon? Yep. If Lelis is here, I don't know if you're speaking, Mike, but you might be muted. He was conserving his uh, his voice. Hmm. So we need to check out the weapon. Is that what's going on? So we found a small cauldron or pot of anti magic cleanser, effectively, and research notes suggesting that this was created recently. To clear the gunk off a gunk-covered weapon that we have found. And we are about to use it to de-gunk the said weapon. We are curious from the Arcanist's point of view if there is any danger here. Well, from a wizard's point of view, we could give him some info, perhaps. All right, so you can tell um, that it is safe, um, but whatever it removes can become animated. Uh, perhaps then we should have the gold limb do it. At least, if anything untoward were to happen, he would not be risking our lives and limbs, or our immortal souls. It's but a construct, a tool. Such, he will order the golem in, and he himself will shuffle Dallas and Deanna out of the room, for safety's sake, and command the golem to dunk the weapon. Being careful not to actually bunk its own fingers or anything in. Like, maybe tie a loose cord or something around the hilt and use that to lower it in. Wow. <laughs> I like the goo gone. <laughs> um, Alright, so as you... As you command the golem to put it into the concoction of strange anti-magic, uh, you actually hear a bubbling and uh, almost a screech uh, come from the pot. And the green and blue and blackish kind of gunk that was on the said weapon dunked in uh, kind of jumps out of the pot as if scared of whatever it had just been put into. And it turns into a very small, uh, cute little, um, it's almost like a, a fox. So it's a tiny little black fox. 
about the size of you can maybe say uh the dagger but it's not gooey at least not anymore you see it kind of shake off whatever it has on it and uh it now has like a fur like body and has green eyes knowing the propensity for small skitterish creatures that we encounter recent past to run away you will immediately cast shadow trap upon it You will trap it, although it doesn't seem to be wanting to scurry away, as it's kind of just looking up at you all. What is it? And just to clarify, this creature was formed from the goo or the weapon that was covered in goo? The weapon that was covered in goo. So literally the weapon that was covered in goo turned into a fox with green eyes. Okay, so this was the weapon itself. Okay. As we apparently have just dipped a weapon in dip. <laughs> the bop looks confused and is not really sure what to make of this. The fox isn't sure to make of you either, as its green eyes kind of just watch you all very intently. the best. What do you make of these? Uh, Dungeon Master, what kind of check would I need to try and identify whatever this creature is? Um... Now, honestly, this is the equivalent of a construct. Uh, okay. So whatever you need to check for constructs. Construct. Arcana. This seems to be a fully repaired construct of a simple little black fox. Um, it can speak. You just need to know what to, you just need to call out its name. Uh, looking at the name written on the wall over there, uh, he'll try Golbium. <laughs> right, and the fox's eyes will go from green to a activated state, which makes them go to a red or a reddish purple. And um, it will kind of look at the shadow cage and then back at the one who said the name, just Puda Bost, and be like, You have called my name. What can I help you with? Oh, wow, you are sentient. Huh, better than I thought. Okay, uh, let's see. Looks back to the group. So, what's the first question? Mind you, you only have probably five questions before this thing gets irritated. Hey, Tabat, maybe let it go? Uh, yes, if you think it is safe. The shadow trap is lifted. Okay, uh, so what questions do we have? Uh, let me think here. Let me think here. What names will open the sealed doors? That's a good one. How might we redeem corrupted goddess?
Ooh, those are good questions, yeah. Um, so, what is the name we need to open that door in uh, deeper in this uh, complex? And uh, how might we go about redeeming Neith? The fox will primarily only honestly look at Pudabost because he is the one who said the name. So its fox's focus is on him. And the eyes will look at him and be like, if you wish to release the wraith, its name is Killian Goldblium. I am half of its name. The creator made me so that way, should anyone need to get in, I am the gatekeeper of the name. Worry not. We're not so much wanting to release it as we're more wanting to uh, put it to rest so it can't uh, get out and cause trouble. As if my master did not try that himself and failed, I am sure. He has not come back. Well, you can at least try. No harm in it. You are more than welcome. You have the name. As for redeeming Neath, you must use the Mask Maker's blood to inject her into her own system. And in that, you have to stab her in the heart. Her immortal heart has been, well, uh, I guess you can say it's been corrupted. And the Mask Maker's blood is the only thing that can purify and heal it. And is is the heart with her, or has she uh, removed it? She has removed it. Do you perhaps know where it is? I may. What's in it for me? Uh, good question. What do you want? Hmm... That is a good question indeed. Although, I am sure not being in this form would be great. I think I preferred being unable to speak. So the fox is basically essentially referring to itself as trying to convert it back to a weapon. Hmm. Okay. Uh, tell us how to return you to a weapon form and... Uh, we will do so after you tell us where the heart is. Hmm. Well, I can simply put it as once I am a weapon, I am the weapon you need to purify Neath. Uh, but to convert me back, you must put you must use magic on me. Uh, particularly a magic weapon. Uh, outside of that, I cannot tell you much. Mm -hmm. Magic weapon, magic weapon. Uh, will this hammer do? And he'll, uh, well, below the hammer is like, oh right, scepter. Scepter, sorry. Uh, yes, that should do, I suppose. Uh, I believe you just have to tap my head three times, and then the gem on my forehead should break. If it's magic. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, let's see. Oh. Uh, so where is the heart? Uh, yes. The heart will be in the heart of this labyrinth. Oh, thank you. Any other questions? Think of. I will take the silence as a no. So, uh, tap, tap, tap away. Well, Do before you tap. Hold your hand. It's not revealed the names for the doors yet. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, he did give away the one for the one door. It was more than one, I thought. Well, it was Ke Kellen Golbium. 
to put the two names together. That is correct. Although you should know, even if you stab her heart, you still have to insert the heart in her. So, do so be careful. If I break, I will turn back into this form and kill you. Good to know. <laughs> oh boy. So, any other questions, anyone? What is the meaning of life, the universe, and everything? Well, it's got it. <laughs> there you go. No other questions being presented. Uh, yep. Uh, Tabot will tap the box three times on the head with his hammer slash scepter and see what happens. As you tap it a third time, uh, the gem basically splits in half on the hidden part under the fur on the fox's head, and it turns back into an arrow. So this weapon that you thought was a dagger of some kind actually turns into an arrow. With an arrowhead... Uh, that seems to resemble the eyes of when it's dormant or unable to speak. So it has a green arrowhead. Neat. So now we just need to uh, get the mask maker's blood, take this thing, put it in that heart, and then put the heart back where it came from. Makes it sound so simple. So, yep, now you have a basically magically constructed arrow, which, you know, should it break, that fox is going to come in and can literally try to kill you. <laughs> we shall see that that does not happen, then. It might be one to put in a bag of holding, or uh, someone's pack where it can be safe. Indeed, I fully expect we will not be able to use this correctly until she is defeated. Um, there is much to do yet in little time. move myself back to the uh, the door what we need to be going through you guys aren't going to thoroughly check I thought Deanna said you're going to thoroughly check the maze oh alright we do have one spot left over here oh I thought we got it all yep We creep through the labyrinthine dungeon. It's the tome. See, there is a door to the south. If I've got this place figured out, there should there should be a dead end. Oh, there's another door this way. She will 
double check the door for traps. Alrighty. Well, the door doesn't seem to actually be trapped this time. Um, but you can tell that this door is jammed. So it's going to require a little force to get in. Force, you say? <laughs> As he looks yeah. over towards Deanna. I was going to say, behold, the dwarven lockpick. All right, Diana will start swinging her Earthbreaker and say knock every time she hits. Okay. Oh, I didn't even have a uh, power attack on, but that's fine. All right. The first two seem to damage it, but you still can't get in. The store is literally made out of uh, really hard marble. Well, it just requires a few more swings. That's what Diana thinks. And this bypass is basically like all its tear. <laughs> Her hardness. Oh, there we go. There's a 57. That should do something. Boom. <laughs> All right. On that crit, you have broken the marble door that once adorned this lovely, beautiful place, and it crumbles to the ground. On the inside, you can see a wall. So it seems to be a three by... A uh, 3 by 10 room like all the others. But this one has different style flooring. So it's not creaked up wood or marble. And she'll uh, walk through. So, once you're in, um, you see that the flooring is made out of stone. So, uh, this looks to be a storeroom of some kind. Uh, you can see shelves filled with uh, what looks to be old guards' weapons. So, they kind of look like sickles uh, with the small handles. Um, there's nothing special about them, but it seems to be about four of them, uh, total in this room. Uh, there is helmet, uh, not helmets, but like the old ancient, uh, headpieces that are dis uh, disintegrating over time. So the fabric is pretty badly worn, but they once had gold and black fabric. Uh, there is a chest, however... Uh, that seems to be made out of wood and has a rusted out um, lock on it. Perhaps you should give the chest a bit of a whack first. We have seen much duplicity here. Alright. Um, so the disabled device is... Uh, it works. Um, 
it basically makes the chest kind of the the old lock break off and you can actually open it now um it hasn't tried to bite her arm off yet so she'll just try to open it Om nom nom nom. I mean, I'm just kidding. Alright, so uh, you can open the chest. Uh, inside is going to be uh, a few more what looks to be wooden arrows. And compared to the one that you found from the priestess, uh, the priestess one seems to be made of a much, much finer material. Uh, and also happens to maybe have maybe a slight more magical property than these. But there is um, two quivers of a of arrows as well, and they seem to be a little more well preserved than the rest of the guards' materials, which are uh, rusted, falling apart, or decrepit. I don't know a lot about magic, but I believe these are ironwood arrows, maybe? No, next to nothing about the archery arts. Would not tell you. I don't think any of us are archers anyway. Perhaps uh, Galem is practiced with martial weapons, perhaps in his training. Uh, Galem, have you learned the bow? I use a lance. But if pressed, could you use a bow? Not really. Alright, well, at least we have it for... Uh... Backup purposes. As the explorations continue. This room door seems to also be busted open. Uh, much like the one that you saw on the bottom left. There does not appear to be any traps. But... There does appear to be what looks to be a hole of some kind uh, at the end of this room. And it doesn't look to be too deep at all. Um, but if one was injured, they definitely couldn't crawl out of it by themselves. Diana will go and take a look, but try not to get too close. Anything you, down there? You will actually see a um, body down there. The body is about ten feet down. Uh, well, about we'll say six feet. Yeah, six feet down. Um, and he seems to be wearing a uh, similar clothes to uh, what was in the photo of. Kelia's father. Oh, that's not good. Uh, the body uh, doesn't look like it's been down there for too long. Um, 
And there may be a chance that he is still breathing. Uh, my Eidolon will uh, fly down and see if he can uh, remove the uh, possible body, possible not body. Okay. As he um, flies down, um, the body doesn't seem to stir. Uh, but when it's picked up, there is a audible groan of pain as the both of the legs are broken on this older man's body. And there seems to be uh, a slightly broken wrist. Ooh, this man fucked up. Thankfully, there is no like flapping of wings involved in his flight, so it is a uh, a smooth travel up and down. Uh, the Eidolon will say that uh, the man is breathing, though he does require a uh, a good bit of medical attention, and will uh, turn to Dabat, who is currently not here. Yeah, I was about to say. And also, probably after Tabot did what he was going to do, I um, was going to offer to end the session there. But yeah, mm. you guys have found Kelia's father, um, who is badly injured, and has looked like he has been bleeding out for the past about two... about a day, maybe? Like, maybe he just fell in there yesterday. But it's been a slow beat uh, bleed and pretty bad injuries to his legs, so he could possibly not be able to walk. <laughs> Call life alert. But as soon as but, uh, but you guys are physical, life alert. As soon as Tabat has physical access, he will use the. Wand of Cure Moderate Wounds that we had located to heal him as much as possible. Also, you know, there's something poetic about a servant of death, you know, bringing him up from the from the depths back into the living world. Indeed. Kind of true. Well, our duties mostly revolve around the sanctification and care of those who have embraced Anubis. We do not neglect those of the living. Indeed, many of our arts and trainings involve healing, preserving life until it is time to be. Sorry, my thing cut out temporarily for some reason. Um, all right. Well, well at least we saved him. And uh, well, we just have like one more spot I think to go exploring through, and then we should be finished up here. So. We'll be able to finish off this place next time. Yeah, because I have to head to work. But, yes, you guys saved Kelia's father, partially. Has he I... hasn't been conscious yet, but you guys at least stopped the injuries. <laughs> hey, t tomato, tomato. He'll, uh, he he'll live, and we'll get him feeling better, you know, when we're out of this dingy, nasty place. We have the technology, a wooden stick. <laughs> we'll make him, well, we can't say better, but he'll kind of be able to walk, especially if you get two sticks. On that note, uh, for those who may be joining us this evening, thank you as always, and we shall see you next week. Bye. Later, y'all.